Welcome to the winging it method. This is how it rolls. We just, you know, figure things out as we go. Welcome back. It is part two of my experimental explorative tutorial for the split side adjustable waist giant pockets skirt that was inspired by the Coquico skirt from Wildflower Design and so many historical influences that I talked about in a previous video. Is it over here? Or is it over here? I never can remember. If you missed part one of this tutorial, well, it's probably fine. I basically spent half an hour breaking down all the possible ways to wrap a piece of fabric around yourself, so real exciting stuff. Also, it's linked in the description if you'd like to go back and start at the beginning. But I have created two skirt bodies over here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about all of the possible ways to put those skirt bodies onto a split waistband, and also how to add pockets. First, let me reiterate all of my disclaimers. I am just an amateur sewist, figuring things out as I go and sharing what I learn with you. Nothing I say is necessarily the right way to do things, it's just the way that I am currently doing things. And I quite often don't know what I'm doing. So, once again, follow this tutorial at your own risk. It did not seem possible, but it's even drearier and even rainier outside today than it was the last few days. I know I keep harping on the rain here, but it is really strange. Last winter, it rained off and on for like two weeks. This winter, it has rained off and on for about five months. I mean, I love some rain, but I also feed from the sun like a plant. We push onwards. Okay, so before we get into the waistbands and the closures, which is going to be a much longer discussion, I'm gonna start with the pockets because that is what I would normally cut out and sew on next. So for skirt number one, we're going back to the peach fabric. So these pockets truly are massive, which I freaking love. They are 17 inches long, about 10 inches wide at the bottom, and they slope up to about six inches wide at the top. I gave them this curved shape, honestly, just to make them even bigger. You only have so much waistband space at the top because it splits in the center. So by curving it out, you can give yourself even more pocket volume down at the bottom. I do want to take a look first at the actual skirt body I'm adding these to so that they are just right for this skirt. Because I have the added ruffle here, I don't want to make the pocket any longer than this. So they will be a little smaller on this one, about 15 inches long. I do think I can probably stay with the six inches on top. And I already have about 10 inches here on the bottom, so this will work. Where are my pins and my scissors? I did not prepare, apparently. I'm actually gonna do 14 inches tall, so I'll just put a little mark there. I already have four layers of fabric here from when I cut out the circle skirt, which is how many layers you will need, two for each pocket. Then I will measure about six and a half inches in from the side to give that seam allowance. Let's be real, I'm gonna do seven inches because I'm paranoid about seam allowances. And I'll put another little mark there. And then yeah, I'm just gonna freehand cut it out because your pocket shape doesn't matter that much. As long as you like it, it's fine. So because of where my fabric was folded, I currently have two pocket panels that are connected on the bottom, like so. When folded in half, this is the side that's going to be attached to the back skirt panel, and this is the side that's just hanging out there free. Simple as that, let's go sew these on. Okay, it's about to get messy, y'all. Expert sewists, look away. But seriously, I very rarely sew in pockets the same way twice because I tend to just go with whatever specifics the current situation provides for me. For example, in this specific situation, I have a pocket with a selvage all the way down the straight side, which means I can avoid doing French seams there, and you bet I'm gonna! So all you need to put in the pockets is the back panel, because the pockets are only attached to the back panel. The first thing I'm going to do is French seam together the far side or curved side of this pocket. I, of course, don't have to go across the bottom because the bottom is folded. Now I'm going to fold under just the top 
side of the pocket and I'm only going to fold it under once because again, selvage, and hem that down so it's a clean edge. This lighting is terrible, but now it looks like that. Next, I'm going to sew the top layer to the back layer, leaving enough room open at the top for my hand to go through as the pocket opening. For me, that's about halfway up. And this is going right on top of the seam I just did. So now it's attached halfway down. Now, setting that aside for a minute, the next thing I am going to do is double hem the entire side of the skirt where this pocket is going to be attached. And here's why. It really doesn't have anything to do with the pocket. When you sew the front panel and the back panel together from the mid thigh down, again, because I don't have a serger, I would want to French seam those seams together. And I've watched a tutorial. I know how to do the thing where you sew a French seam and then the two pieces separate. I did it. I did not like it. So my solve for that is to literally just finish the edges on the sides of my skirt before I sew them together and then sew together the finished edges, right sides touching each other like you would sew any seam. It's not what I would assume is the established right way to do it. It is, however, how I am doing it. Good lord, it's coming down. Now we can actually attach the pocket to the skirt. I feel like I'm having to yell over the rain. <laughs> so right sides together, just like a normal seam. And I'm feeling with my finger where the top layer ends and stitching right next to that. That way I don't accidentally stitch my opening closed. Now when you fold that open, that's your finished pocket. So the top of the pocket here will be held down in place by attaching it to the waistband, but I am going to go ahead and baste across that just so that it's not flapping around later on when I'm trying to sew it down. And here we have our finished back panel with the two pockets attached. Pocket and pocket. Before we go back to skirt number two, we can now actually stitch our front panel and our back panel together up the sides. So I'm gonna go grab the front panel and then do the exact same rolled hem all the way up the two sides of it. So when matching up the front and back panel, the most important place that you want to line up is usually the top because it's easy to trim half an inch off the end if the hems don't quite line up. But since we have this line down the center of our skirt, that's what I want to line up. So I'm going to lay out the back panel first with the right side facing up, place the front panel on top of it with the right side facing down, and then match up those two seams. Throw some pins in. So on my first skirt, I basically left the split in the side from right where the pocket started. I'm going to do that exact same thing here because the pocket starts where this seam is anyway. I'm also going to make sure that where I start that seam, I do some really solid back stitching. There's not a ton of pressure that's put on that split of the skirt, unless you made the split so tight that you had to kind of like yank it up over your butt. But in general, anywhere where you can be pulling a seam in two different directions, you want it to be pretty strong. So the skirt one body is complete, including Le pockets. I also went ahead and hemmed the entire bottom. It's just a basic rolled hem and it took for freaking ever because that's a lot of fabric. So let's move over to skirt number two and get some more pockets cut out. Okay, moving on with skirt number two. There's nothing here to stop me from making the pockets as big as I freaking want. People latch on to how big the pockets are as what's cool about them, but actually what's cool about how these pockets are attached is that they are in the waistband itself. So a lot of times in skirts and dresses, you get side seam pockets that have just been sewn on to the side seams themselves. They're usually like a rounded shape like this. I've done tons of them. And sometimes that's your only option. You know, if there's no waistband whatsoever, if there's not even a waist seam, that's kind of all you can do. However, what that means is that if you're putting anything in your pockets, that's going to pull down on the side seams of your dress or skirt. So I've actually been taking this concept of pockets that are not shaped like this, but are shaped like this and sewn into the waistband. And I have been applying that to everything that I can, everything that has a waistband or a waist seam in it. 
I'm now sewing my pockets into that because that means when I put something heavy into the pockets, it's not just pulling on the side seams, it's also distributing that weight across your waistband. So as a result, it's much less likely that you're going to get weird sagging in your skirt or dress from the weight that you put in your pockets. Little bit of side info there. So if you're using a directional fabric like this, you technically don't have to care about the direction of the pattern on the pockets. They're not really showing when you're wearing the skirt normally. The pockets are also a great time to use just a completely different fabric if you're running out of the fabric that your skirt is made out of. Once again, I want four layers. So when it comes to pocket size and shape, I quite often just work with what I have, either what's left of fabric or what's most convenient to cut out on the fabric. So right here, I've got 11 inches across. So the bottom of my pockets are gonna be 11 inches. Why not, you know? And then I think I'll do 16 inches tall. I still don't want 11 inches at the waistband though, because they wouldn't even fit. So I'm gonna stick with that same seven inches at the top and then just freehand a little curve down the side. And this time, because of the way my fabric was folded, I have panels that look like this and fold this way. That does not work. This right here is where the opening for your hand is going to be, so those have to be separate. So I'm just gonna cut all of these panels in half. All of these panels, there's only two. Let's go sew on our second set of pockets. Okay, so full disclosure, I just had to go cut out two more of these because I started sewing the pockets on in my winging it way and got it completely wrong. But now I know how to do it right, right for me. So of course, this time I have two disconnected panels and what I messed up before is I forgot that on a skirt like this with a fabric like this, you want the right side of the fabric to be on the front of the back panel. Like the back panel should be facing in this direction. Because otherwise, when you stick your hand in that pocket or it opens it all a little bit, you just see a bunch of white. You should actually have right side to wrong side on both of your pockets here. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> moving on. The other thing that's different with this back panel is as I mentioned in the last video, I over calculated on my um, paranoia. I want it to fit extra amount on the side. So I have a chunk of fabric on the side that I do not need for the width of the skirt. I could cut it off, but instead I'm going to leave it there and just put the pocket on top of it. Therefore, like I did with the last skirt, I'm going to start by just roll hemming the edge all the way down. The next thing that I'm going to do is roll hem the straight side of the top pocket piece, just the top one. That is hemmed. I'm now gonna go iron those seams because this fabric actually kinda blips when you sew it. Okay, ironing has been done. So now I am going to French seam the bottom and the curved side of the pocket together. This is where I always get confused and where I got confused about 10 minutes ago, <laughs> unsurprisingly. So when French seaming a pocket, I want the final seam to actually be on the outside of the pocket. Say on a side seam, you'd want that to be on the inside. And really you can do it either way for a pocket, so this is just a personal preference. Which means my first seam does need to be the right sides together. But the right sides of the pocket are not the same as the right sides of the fabric, because the right sides of the fabric are both pointing in the same direction. Do you see how I got confused? <laughs> so this is the final way that the pocket will be. For my first seam of the French seam, I'm literally just going to take the back piece and put it on the front. And that should be correct. Now I don't believe myself until I actually finish the seam and see that it is correct. <laughs> Moment of truth, now we turn that the other direction. And do we have the front on the front? We do! That was correct information I just gave you. Yay! All right, now I put in my second seam to finish the French seam. We have our lovely French seamed pocket. Right now it is still 
fully open on the side. So now I'm going to attach it to the skirt. And as I mentioned, I don't want it right on the edge because this is too much fabric. I actually want it to start right about where the last pleat ends because that's where my actual side seam is. So I have this extra bit of the back part of the pocket still showing that's what's going to get sewn down. So pocket is sewn on. Now if I fold it open, it's the direction it is supposed to be. It's like magic. I am going to now top stitch that down just so that it lays flatter and looks nicer. So right now our pocket is still fully open. So I'm literally just going to sew about halfway up right along the same seam that already exists on the front of the pocket to close it up as much as I want it to be closed. There we go. The opening is now less. And then as I did on the last one, I'm just gonna baste across the top. So it's ready to go for putting on the waistband. We have pockets. Same as with skirt one, I can now attach the front panel to the back panel. I do want to attach this one a little higher so that the split between the front and the back panel, not so it's so small that I have to like work it on carefully, but so that it's a little bit smaller than what I've been doing before. I don't really have a reason why, I just want to try it out. I'll have to do a test first to see how far I can close it and still comfortably get it on with no issues. Also, because I have that extra flap of fabric on here, I am going to be sewing the front flap on inside rather than right on the edge. Okay, I have tested and I think that I can close my side seams about to an inch below my pocket openings, which for me is the widest part of my boutte. If the split opens from that widest part, then I should be able to easily get the whole thing on and off. Again, the first thing that I'm going to do on the front panel is finish off these edges. And unlike the back panel where I just left those because they're going to be behind the pockets anyway, I do want to actually shorten my front panel by about that much. So I'll be hemming and cutting off that extra fabric. So since there's no middle seam or anything to line up on this one, I'm just starting from the top, lining that up, pinning it all the way down and then sewing up to my stopping point. Once again, we have the skirt body completely finished. I did go ahead and add a hem on the bottom as well. Our pockets are added and ready to go. All right, back out to the cutting table. Let's finally get to some waistbands and closures. It's never gonna stop raining. So we are on to our final segment, our final challenge in making these skirts, the waistband. With any skirt and any waistband, regardless of whether it is this split side style or not, you of course have your main basic questions. Where on your body is this waistband going to fall? Is it empire waist? Is it drop waist? Is it somewhere in between? For my body type, my own personal preference is waistbands that start on the natural waist and extend upward. There are many other options and it really helps to play around, try on articles of clothing that have different waistlines and see which one you really feel the most comfortable in and which one you feel flatters your personal shape the most. The next general question to ask is how wide do you want your waistband to be? For some reason, I have a heavy preference for very wide waistbands. The waistband on this skirt is three and a half inches. So it extends upwards pretty much over my ribs. So of course the smallest waistband you could do is actually no waistband or like an invisible waistband where the top of your skirt is basically just finished and that's it. And then of course the widest waistband you can do is dependent on your body. You kind of have to stop where your boobs are. I think if you tried to go over your boobs, it wouldn't be a waistband anymore. It would just be a bodice. Before we get into the more specific questions associated with the split side style, I do want to plug the Coquico pattern by Wildflower Design again, because the waistband I would say it's the most complicated part of these skirts. That's not to say it's hard or that you won't be able to figure it out. We absolutely can figure it out. But one thing I will be doing here is straight waistbands. I have drafted curved waistbands before. I'm not interested in doing it right now on these skirts. And because I put things on my natural waist and higher, a straight waistband 
kind of works for me. I don't really need a curved one as much. If you're putting things on your natural waist and lower, you're starting to go over your hips and therefore a curved waistband is going to be a lot more comfortable. So the Coquico skirt that she designed has a thin waistband visible on the outside, but on the inside, you have a much wider waistband that has all of that lacing that makes the skirt adjustable. Melanie of Wildflower Design has done all of the work of drafting out a curved waistband that sits comfortably on your lower waist and that remains hidden so that you can have that thin one inch waistband visible on the outside. That's not something I'll be doing here. So if you're looking for the nuanced waistband like that, once again, go get her pattern. It is linked in the description. It's a great pattern. People are loving it and it could save you a lot of time. <laughs> but if like me, your brain just rejects patterns, then let's keep going with our exploration. So after that, we get into the questions that are more specific to our split side adjustable waist style. To break it down again, always break things down into smaller questions. You first need to ask, how is the back panel going to be attached? And then how is the front panel going to be attached? Because those aren't the same two answers. They could be, but they don't have to be. For this skirt, the answers to those questions are the back half hooks on really just for safety and then laces up the front half ties on with a large sash. There are many, many other options at its very core. As I discussed quite heavily in my historical influences video, these questions would both be answered by tied sashes, ribbons, twill tape, whatever you want it to be. The backside would first tie around your waist in the front. Then the front panel would go over that and tie around your waist in the back. Another option that is again, both the back and the front being tied is to tie the front to the back on both sides, right at your hips. So you'd have little bows there or knots. Because of the pocket placement, you actually could probably do a side bow or attachment and still not have any problems with seeing through to bare skin or underwear because the pockets act as a background. And this is true regardless of how you choose to do your closure. With the two panels layered together right here, Here's the big gap. Yeah, I can stick my hand through it. But if I pull that gap back, I'm seeing the fabric of the pocket. It's like there's another whole layer in here and you'd have to pull it way far back to get past those pockets and be in any way immodest. Going back to waistbands and closures. So while there are other options for the back panel, like you could have it come around and just button together, you could have it come around and hook and eye together in the front. A couple people have said it's a really good way to recycle the hooks on the back of a bra. You could sew those into the back waistband and have multiple different hooks right there. Barely any work on your side. I do, however, want to continue exploring that lace up design. So I'm going to be doing a version of the lace up on both of these back panels. Of course, when it comes to the lacing, you again have multiple options within that one category. On this skirt, I did grommets because that just seemed like the easiest option at the time. As I think I mentioned in the last video, I had never put grommets in clothing. So they are a mess. And there did seem to be a general fear among the public for grommets. So we're gonna try two other options on these skirts. On the peach one, I'm going to make my own loops. You can do this with ribbon. I'm going to be using bias tape because I just happen to already have some in black. Another option is some sort of trim that already has the loops in it. There is specifically loop trim. I keep looking for it everywhere because when I used to work altering bridal gowns, we had tons of loop trim. Corset back gowns would be made with this loop trim sewn in on the sides. So if you find any of this loop trim, grab it and hold on to it. Could be very handy. What I did find instead of that is hook and eye trim. And the last time I went to remainders, I found this lovely spool of just the eye, no hook, which is perfect. So here again, we have something that has already been constructed for me with strong little loops 
in it. I can sew this trim into the ends of my back waistband and I have pre-made hooks holes ready to go there. I just have to use a fairly small lacing cord. So this is what I'm going to use on the cupcake skirt. So then the last question is, what are we doing with the front panel? Obviously the sort of classic and go-to is the tying method. Whether you tie it in the back or the front, if you have a big sash, if you just have a thin one, whatever it is, tying is an easy option. It's a cute option. It's the option that I'm going to be using on the cupcake skirt. But I needed to try something different because I always need to try something different. On this skirt, the front waistband is actually going to just reach past my side seams. Then I can sew the bar side onto the back panel and the hook onto the front waistband and hook it around right at those side seams. This could also be done with like a big button and a buttonhole, which would be super cute, but I don't like making buttonholes. All right, y'all, let's cut out some waistbands. For skirt number one, I want my front waistband to extend about one and a half to two inches past the edge of the panel on both sides. So that would be about 20 to 21 inches long. I'm gonna cut out a 22 inch so that I have some seam allowance on the ends. And then I want it to be two inches wide in the end. Of course, that's going to be folded in half, so I need four inches, and I'm gonna do five inches, you guessed it, for seam allowance. To measure how long I want the back waistband to be, I'm just holding the skirt up to me to see how close the pockets come. And as you can see, my pockets already are almost meeting in the center. So I don't want my waistband to extend anywhere past them. I want it to stop right where the pockets are so that I still have some space to, you know, adjust the lacing. From pocket to pocket, my measurement is 29 inches. So I'm gonna cut out a 30 inch by five inch back waistband. Last thing I want is a little panel to go behind the lacing. This is really just for aesthetics. You don't really need this to be there. It's up to you if you wanna add it. So even though my lacing right now might only be a couple inches on this skirt, I'm gonna go ahead and make the panel probably like eight inches long. That way in the future, I have the option to extend that size if I should need to. Let's get cutting. This is a great time to use any little scraps that you may have. If nothing else, I should at least be able to get the little eight by five panel out of this. Oh, perfect, you're eight inches exactly. Did I not bring my scissors again? Man. So starting with the front waistband, I'm going to fold it in half and then sew down the two edges and inward a little. Not too much, just what would be the overhang past my front panel. So with both of those corners sewn, I can now trim off the extra fabric and then turn them right side out, like so. So now I'm gonna fold this in half and find my exact center. And then I'll do the same thing with my front panel, fold that in half and find the center. Now with right sides together, I'll pin the front side of the waistband to the front panel. And since I'm pinning a curve to a straight line, I'm gonna put in a lot of pins. So once I sew that on, the waistband will flip up like so. There we go. So before I top stitch down the back side of my waistband, I'm gonna go ahead and sew my hooks onto the ends here, just because right now I still have access to the inside and I can therefore hide my knots in there. And then I fold it over the edge and pinned it so it's ready to be top stitched down. All right, and that is our front waistband all finished. Not too shabby. Let's get started on the back one. First up, I'm gonna prep this little panel by sewing down one side, all the way down the long side, and turning it right side out. And that's good to go for now. The unfinished end is the one that we will attach, and then the finished end will be the one with like hooks and eyes or snaps. We're kind of doing the same thing as our front waistband. The only difference is that we need to include those loops in the end so that we can do the lacing up. So first I'm going to cut four pieces for loops and just kind of test. You can do whatever size you want. I think if I can get a finger through there, then that's a good size. I did mine three inches. Since there's not any overhang on this one, I'm actually going to start by attaching it to the back panel. So again, I'll find the center and then we can match those centers up. And again, we're pinning the right side of the front side of the waistband to the front side 
of the back panel. Whoo! So that is our waistband from the outside, looking good. We need to get the loops on the end of it. So I usually just test my spacing by folding everything over the way that it will be once it's sewn down. So I'm gonna be doing two loops like this. Then if you don't wanna have to figure out where they actually are going to be sitting while you sew things, you can literally just tuck them inside. Then when you unpin, and unfold. It's like, hey, look, that's where they should go. And then you just have to even it out a little bit. But essentially your loops should be pinned like this. They're facing towards the back of the skirt, not towards the direction they're going to go in the end. I'm gonna base them on before I actually sew the end closed, just so that I don't have to worry about them moving around. Now we're folding the waistband in half with the right sides together, and then just sewing right down that line in line with the edge of my pocket. Now, when I turn that right side out, Ta-da! I have a nice clean finish on the end there with two little loops. So I'm just gonna do that exact same thing on the other side. If you're scared of grommets, this is a very easy alternative. All right, we've got both of our little loops in. So now just like the front waistband, we're turning under the inside and top stitching to finish it off. It's top stitching time. <laughs> We have a waistband. Don't worry, I will iron it. Lest you think I forgot this, I did not. There's probably a nicer way to do this. I'm just gonna do it my way. So on the inside of the back waistband, either side, because this can be coming from either direction, I'm going to sew the raw edge of this facing away from the opening. Now we can fold it up towards the loops. And that means that on the front of the waistband, this is the front now, it's a backing for our lacing. So I'm gonna top stitch right here now to enclose the raw seam inside. I do have two visible seams here. So because I like symmetry, I'm going to go on the other side and just sew two seams there in the same place. So it looks purposeful. Admittedly, I'm not doing this with great care. All right, that is pretty much this skirt done. There's just a few little final hand sewing bits. I'm not gonna film the rest of this because I think you guys got the concept, but basically I'm gonna fit this around my waist and then add snaps right here and on the back here. And then of course I added the hooks to my front waistband, but I need the bars for them to hook onto. So once again, I'll put it on, I'll lace it up, I'll fit it properly, and then I'll mark where those bars need to go in order for the front waistband to fit me as I want it to right now. And then I will hand stitch those on. Jumping over to skirt number two, I'm again just going to hold it up to me and see where the pockets are landing. As you can see, they're landing a little further away. That's still pretty close though. So I am going to do the same thing where my waistband stops where the pockets stop. That is again, 29 inches. So we'll do 30 inches for seam allowances. And I said that I wanted this waistband to be three inches, double that six inches, add seam allowance. So we have a 30 inch by seven inch rectangle. Again, we need that back backing panel. And again, there's not much of a difference in shape there from the last one, but it did look a little bit further. So just in case I'm going to bump up that backing panel to a 10 inch. Now here's where it gets a little different because we're doing a sash on the front side. So since it's often difficult to get a massively long piece of fabric all in one piece, what you can do here is start with a panel that is the size of your front panel itself, so more of a waistband, and then add sashes to the sides of those waistband. My front panel measures 18 inches at the top, I'm gonna bump that up to 19, so I have a 19 by seven inch rectangle. And then to figure out how long to make your sash ties, I do it with a measuring tape. You could also just do it with a piece of yarn or a ribbon or whatever you have on hand. The sash should be starting about here-ish because that's where the front panel will pull up. I want it to be able to tie in the back, but I also want it to be able to tie in the front, which would mean this piece comes all the way around. It's gotta make a bow. It's gotta make a knot. And then it's gotta have some string hanging down. Yeah, about 60 inches. 
I might do 65 if I have a lot of fabric. So I'm gonna need two rectangles that are each 60 to 65 inches long and seven inches wide. A bing, bing, boom. Let's get cutting. All right, so on this one, I again have to think of the direction. I don't want my cupcakes to be upside down on my waistband. So I am once again dealing with this is the most that I can get at one time. So there is my 30 inch. This leftover piece is like 14 inches instead of 10, but I'm just gonna leave it for now. I also don't like odd numbers. So I literally sometimes cut out larger pieces than I technically need. 19 annoys me. So I cut out a 20 inch piece instead. So now I just need the two long pieces for the sash, which obviously I can't get out of this because it's only 45 inches wide. So what I'll end up doing is cutting out four 44 inch pieces and each sash will have to be sewn together and will end up being like 88 inches long. So I'm gonna have a ridiculously long sash, but at least that means I could tie a really big bow. And if you're gonna tie a bow on something, you might as well make it giant and dramatic. So keep in mind, if you're planning on doing a wide waistband and or a long sash, it is gonna take a lot more fabric, which is once again, why this is not a normal tutorial because I'm not sitting here telling you how much fabric you need. You're on your own there. What I am telling you is that if you're starting with a certain amount of fabric, there is almost definitely a version of this skirt that you can make with the amount of fabric you have. Maybe not with like a yard. It does take a little more than that. So those are four pieces, 44 inches each. Back to sewing. <sighs> All right, I've slept, I have coffee, let's do this thing. Welcome to How Long Can Charlie Wear a Turtleneck Before Her Brain Starts Screaming. Nope. I regret all my choices. A little bit better. For skirt number two, let's start with the back waistband and leave the big old sash to second place. This part is going to be pretty much exactly the same as I did on skirt number one, so I shan't go into too much detail. Starting with my little backing panel, sew it down two sides, turn it right side out, set your tube aside. Mark the center of your back waistband, mark the center of your back panel. I'm not even gonna mark it here because I have a pleat right on the center, so it's easy to see. And pin it on right sides together. I'm taking extra care here to make sure I'm pinning it on with the print in the direction I want it to be. All right, so big surprise, my measurements are slightly off. <laughs> How would that happen? So I cut out a 30 inch waistband for the back panel and it's actually exactly lining up with the edges, which seems like it would be great, except now I don't have any seam allowance to close that up and make the ends look nice. This is why I'm always going overboard on my seam allowances. So I actually need like a 32 inch. I still have more fabric. I could just go cut out another one, but instead let's utilize what I already have. So I have these four pieces for the sash. I'm gonna steal one of them, replace it with the 30 inch and cut down a second one to match the 30 inch. So now it will be 74, which is still longer than it needs to be. So those go back to being my sash. And now this piece, which is 44 inches long, I can cut down to 32 inches long and I'm gonna be paranoid and do it 33 inches. And now we have plenty of overhang. Let's sew that on. Is it the right way? It is. So this time, instead of making the little loops, I am using this hook trim, eye trim. Time to start shouting over the rain again. So this one has the material behind the metal loops, which I don't really want there. So I'm going to fold it in half when I sew it in so that it's more like that. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's the most beautiful bird singing. Not that the bird is beautiful, I can't see the bird, I'm sure it is, but the song is beautiful. I may not have the sun, but at least there's something nice. And again, just like with those bias tape loops, I wanna pin them on and base them on with the loops pointing in towards the skirt first, so that when we flip it, they will be pointing 
away from the skirt as they should be. And then it's that same process of folding the waistband in half with the right sides touching each other and sewing that inseam closed. And then you can turn it right side out. And here's a few things that I just learned. I probably should have left some on the ends and folded it over in the back so that there's not just raw edges there. Also, I kind of put this on backwards because this is the clean side and this is the side where there's little stitches there. Um, oh well, we live and we learn. So let's do the second side now but do it even better. So on the second side, I folded over the ends so that there will not be a raw edge just sticking out. And I made sure that the back of the tape will be on the back of the skirt. Yay for improving. Another thing I wanna do on this side is pre-attach our lacing backing panel. I'm basically going to attach it the same way I did on the first skirt, but by doing it before I fold over the waistband, I can keep the seams for that on the back of the waistband only, so there's no extra seams on the front of the waistband. Tis like so. Then I'll fold it over in the direction it's going to go and sew it down again to enclose that seam, just like we did on skirt number one. So it looks like that right now, but when we fold up our waistband into how we're about to sew it down, it looks like that. Now once again, I will fold right sides facing each other to close off the end of the waistband. Like so. And then we unfold. And ta-da! I'm gonna finish off the waistband by folding it over and top stitching it down. There is our finished waistband with our lace up front and backing panel. Let's move on to Le front waistband. So I have the smaller piece that is going to go on the actual waistband and then the four pieces that will be my sash. The first thing I'm gonna do is just sew them all together into one giant piece. And here we have our exceptionally long sash. Now folding it in half with right sides together, I'm going to sew the ends closed and sew all the way down the side until I reach that center piece, which I will leave open. And since it's a sash, I'm actually gonna sew a little diagonal here on the end. So it has cute little ends. And same thing on the other side. Now we trim off the extra fabric up here and then turn the whole thing right side out. Always a thrilling part of the process. I have my sash turned right side out and ironed. I do iron sometimes, y'all. And I've once again marked the center, so I'll start pinning from the center out. Then I just sew that on, then flip over and fold under the back side of the waistband and top stitch it down. And that's it. The front half is done. The back half is done. The only thing I have left is hand sewing some hook and eyes or hook and bars or snaps onto our little backing panel. And then we will take a look at the final two skirts and I'll go over the little details and show you how they're put on and all of that good stuff. So let's do that now. Let me just stick that mic pack in the giant pocket. God, I love pockets. Y'all, I'm so pleased with this one. It turned out even better than I expected. I think the two fabrics together are really cute. I will say I did not at all think about how see-through the peach fabric is. It just didn't occur to me when I was sewing it. So a lining might have been a good idea, or I can just, you know, not be lazy about my underwear choice. But because both of them are a really light fabric, this skirt weighs like nothing and it twirls 
it twirls so well. Using the hook and bar method on this front panel, it did mean that I had to be a lot more precise with it. But if my size changes and I need to move those bars forward a little bit so that I can fit a wider waist, then that is absolutely possible and easy. I don't always want a big sash or a big bow on my skirts, so this is a great option. I ended up using some elastic cording I had, and I'm glad I did because overall this skirt has kind of less of like a sense about it. This is more of a loose, comfortable skirt. Yeah, what more can I say? I'm very pleased with it. There's still a few things that I could improve here and there, but I think it is a great second version of this skirt. Let's move on to the third one. Skirt number two here turned out even better than I expected, quite frankly. Again, using the sash tie version of the waistband is the easiest and kind of just turns out well every time. But I must say the lacing on the inside, I think turned out great too. This one is a lot more like a cinching in kind of style. Um, I did not notice until I was sewing the hooks onto this middle panel that I sewed it on upside down. Y'all probably noticed a lot earlier than I did in this video. It's fine though, it doesn't show on the outside of the skirt and you can barely even see it when this is open. I am delightfully surprised by how swooshy this skirt ended up being. Adding those trapezoidal sort of shapes, the diagonals on the side, really did help because it swooshes out when you spin quite nicely. Anyway, that is it. This ended up being so much information, but there were just so many details that I wanted to include in order for you to have as much information as possible and be able to create something that is as perfect for you as possible. And I will be honest, making this tutorial has kind of exhausted me a lot more than any normal video would for me. I could chalk it up to the fact that I haven't seen the sun in weeks. I think I was talking so much and then I was second guessing everything that I was saying and then questioning why I was even making a tutorial when I just barely learned how to sew myself. But I am aware that I have a, a somewhat different way of going about things than maybe some other people do, that I have a different way of approaching challenges and learning a new skill. And I've always hoped that my videos will not only inspire other people to take on projects and make things and be creative, but might also help you figure something out by watching me figure it out, if that makes sense. So if this tutorial helped you figure something out and it helped you create a split side skirt, I would absolutely love to see the results. Please do share, tag me, anything. I, I wanna see. I love rejoicing in other people's creations. I have so many more ideas in the world of the split side adjustable waist garments. And hopefully there will be videos coming in the future of all of my experimentation, exploration, not really tutorials. Until then, happy sewing, happy creating, later taters.